Howdy folks, Kevin here, author of the Web App Testing Guidebook. In this video, we're going to spend five minutes getting WebDriver IO version 6 set up. To start off, we're going to talk about what WebDriver IO does and why you'd want to use it. WebDriver IO is a browser automation test framework for Node.js. That means that it's a tool which allows you to automate a browser in a way that mimics human usage. With it, you can write code that clicks links or buttons, types into form fields, and reads data from the page. It's similar in functionality to other tools such as Selenium, Puppeteer, Cypress IO, or Protractor. This functionality is mainly used for testing websites and applications to ensure their user interface is working properly, which is what I focus on in my videos. One significant advantage of WebDriver IO is its built-in extensibility. Starting with version 4, WebDriver IO formalized integration development, giving it a rich feature set that allows you to easily add and extend your setup to fulfill your specific requirements through services and reporters. We'll talk more about that later. Another key benefit of WebDriver IO is the synchronous style in which you write commands. While all actions are still taken asynchronously, the library adapts itself to a more human-readable format. This means typing less code and cleaner, more concise files overall. Compare this to Selenium WebDriver, which is full of awaits and chained commands. Let's check out the Getting Started guide to see how we can get up and running. The first step we need to take is to make sure we have Node.js installed. I'm not going to cover installation in this video, but you can do a quick check by running node-v in a terminal. With that confirmed, let's move on to setting up the project. We're going to make a new directory called WebDriver IO test and then move into it. Next, we'll run npm init-y, which will give us a standard npm project. Now that we have our project set up, let's get things started by installing the WebDriver IO CLI. We can do that by running npm i dash dash save dash dev at wdio slash CLI. Give that a few seconds to install, and then we can move on. With our CLI installed, let's put it to use. We're going to generate a new configuration file that stores all of our project settings. To do this, we'll run npx wdio config and then add the dash y argument to use all the defaults. You can omit this argument if you want to run through the setup utility yourself, but for simplicity's sake, we're going to go with what comes out of the box. During the installation and configuration process, WebDriver IO has installed several packages for us. If we take a quick peek at our package.json file, you can see those dependencies get automatically added. There's no action you need to take on this, I just wanted to show it. Now we're ready to start writing tests. Let's kick things off by creating a new folder called test slash specs. This is the default location for your test to live in that gets set up in your configuration file. In that folder, we're going to create a new file called basic.js and then open that file so we can add the example code. Let's walk through line by line what this code does. The first line of code is a describe block. If you're familiar with Mocha.js, this syntax should look very similar because it is Mocha.js. Describe helps organize how your tests are set up. So you'll have multiple tests inside of a single describe block. Here we have a test name, webdriver.io page, but you can main that whatever you'd like. The next line is an it block, which defines a single test. In this, we say that the test should check that it has the right title. On line three, we run a browser.url statement. This is the first bit of webdriver.io specific code in our file. Browser.url will load a URL into the browser that opens. Here, we're going to the WebDriver IO homepage. Finally, we're going to run an assertion. An assertion checks that two items relate to each other in a specific way. You can check that two items are the same, two items are different. There are many different assertions you can get that out there, and they can get kind of complicated, but we're not going to cover that here. The assertion we're going to use is that we're going to expect browser to have a title that matches the title that we set. The expect function comes from the expect WebDriver IO package, is new to version 6, and is a great addition to an already fantastic library. Now it's time to run our test. Let's jump back to our terminal and run npx wdio. Great, our test passed as expected. One thing you may have noticed in this example is that we didn't need to install Selenium or Chrome driver or any browser driver. This is because WebDriver IO used Chrome and Chrome driver automatically through services. The Chrome driver service that gets added by default when you run your configuration setup takes care of getting a Chrome driver instance started, 
And WebDriver IO uses Puppeteer by default, so you don't need to install anything extra like Selenium. These improvements have made getting started with WebDriver IO a lot simpler and a lot quicker. As I mentioned at the beginning, these services and frameworks are a key part of what makes WebDriver IO so great. I won't cover it here, but the ability to add custom services and frameworks really helps extend the core functionality of the library to provide the most value for you with the least amount of effort. Well, that's all you need to know to get started with WebDriver IO. If you're interested in learning more, check out my book, The Web App Testing Guidebook, which covers real world examples on how to write a full UI test automation suite using WebDriver IO. It's available at LeanPub, and I'll have a link to it in the description. Until next time, have fun testing.